The Effects toolset contains tools which modify all of the layers in your project at once. In Photo Key 4, there are two, Vignette and Tint. Vignette applies a darkened border to the corners and edges of the final image. This can help draw attention to the center of the image and the subject found there. By default, the vignette is black, but you can change the color by clicking the Change button. Usually, either black or white work the best, but you can select any color that your project requires. The intensity of the vignette can be controlled by switching between the light, the normal, which is the default, and the bold buttons. In Photo Key 4 Pro, there are additional controls over the shape and intensity of the vignette. The horizontal stretch and vertical stretch controls adjust the height and width of the vignette shape. Feather controls the softness of the vignette's edge. Feather Bias adjusts the weight of the transition area. Higher values will make the outside edge of the transition heavier, while lower values will increase the opacity toward the center of the effect. Strength modifies the overall intensity of the vignette to make it darker or lighter. Back in the standard version of Photo Key, let's disable the vignette and look at the Tint tool. Tint is generally used to create monochromatic images, and in Photo Key 4, allows you to create either sepia-toned or black-and-white versions of your final composition. The type of tint can be selected from the menu, and the strength controls the blend of the tint color, in this case black and white, with the original colors of the project. At moderate strengths, the tint tool can be used to mute the colors of the canvas image to create dramatic color effects. Since it works on all layers of the project at once, it is simpler, quicker, and often more accurate than trying to manipulate the color of each layer in the project individually. Photo Key 4 Pro offers a number of additional tint types. We still have the black and white and sepia, which we saw in the standard version, but Photo Key 4 Pro has a large list of additional tints as well. Bronze gives a sepia look with heavy contrast. Cyanotype replicates the process historically used to create blueprints giving a blue-toned image. Emerald creates a black and white image with a subtle greenish cast. Gold is closer to black and white than sepia, but still has a slightly yellow tonal quality. Palladium provides slightly richer highlights than the standard black and white, with a very subtle red cast to it. Platinum creates neutral tones, but not as sterile as the standard black and white and Platinum Palladium combines the two to give an alternate black and white processing with a pleasant aged quality. Selenium conveys a deep reddish tone, especially in the darker areas of the image. And Silver is an excellent choice for use in replicating the look of antique photographs as it simulates the process used to develop black and white images in the early days of film. You'll notice that there is a much larger assortment of effects in Photo Key 4 Pro as well. Let's take a moment to look at each of these. Three Strip Color replicates the rich, vibrant colors of Technicolor processing. This is often especially noticeable in the way it handles skin tones, but the red, green, and blue strength sliders allow you to dial in the presence of each of these color channels independently to get just the Technicolor look you are after. Bleach Bypass is designed to provide the look of a traditional film processing technique wherein the bleaching agent is left out of the chemical bath while the film is being developed. This results in images with very high contrast and low saturation, and is commonly used in war films and other movies aiming for a gritty appearance. Separate sliders for the contrast and the saturation allow you to precisely dial in these two primary aspects of the bleach bypass effect. The strength slider controls how strongly the bleach bypass effect overrides the original colors present. Focus Blur is similar to the vignette tool we looked at earlier, but rather than applying a colored overlay to the edges of the image, it blurs only the edges of the canvas, leaving the center in focus. It also provides a focus control, so you can click the button, then use the crosshairs that appear on the canvas to specify exactly where the center of the in-focus area should be. The blur slider controls the amount of blur that is applied. 
spread adjusts the size of the in focus area. And then the range modifies the softness of the transition from in focus to blurred. Transparency controls the overall intensity of the blur over the top of the canvas image. So if we turn that up a bit, you can see that the blur is still present here, but it's a much softer, more subtle effect than if we leave the transparency at zero. You can also switch the type of the focus blur from radial to horizontal to create a more linear effect, more like a depth of field simulation. I'm going to reduce the range a bit just so we can see the effect more clearly. When using the horizontal type, the angle wheel can be used to control the angle at which the focal plane cuts across the canvas. So by default it's on a flat horizontal plane right to left, but we can turn that with the angle wheel and that focal plane will rotate around the center point selected with the focus tool. So just to demonstrate that, let's set the We'll keep it in roughly the same level, but we'll move the center point all the way over to the edge of the canvas here. And then as we rotate it, you can see that that point there by the edge of the canvas now becomes the center, and our focal plane rotates around that point. Maybe to finish that off, we'll just increase the range a little bit to make it look better. The last effect found in PhotoKey 4 Pro that we haven't covered is the soft focus. This again uses a sort of blurring technique, so let's turn off our focus blur, and we'll turn off the bleach bypass as well. And then we're going to switch to an image that's uh, just a little bit closer up so we can see the effects of the filter more clearly. Soft focus emulates the dreamy, softened effect traditionally created by attaching a soft focus filter to your camera lens. This is achieved by duplicating the canvas image, applying a blur to the duplicate, and then subtly overlaying the blurred copy over the original image. As a result, the image appears softer, but since the original is still intact below the duplicate, none of the actual edge detail and definition is lost. The amount of blur applied to the duplicate is controlled with the blur slider. So let's add a little bit more blur. And then the strength adjusts the opacity of the duplicate layer over the original which controls the strength of the final effect. The Blend Mode menu allows you to modify the process used to combine the duplicate image with the original. Lighten is the default, which creates a fairly subtle softening effect. For even more dramatic softening, try the Normal Mode. You can see how much more blur is added using that mode, uh, even with the same settings. The other modes have less of a softening effect, but can be useful for manipulating color. Add and Screen will cause an overall brightening of your image, with Screen being the more subtle of the two. Soft Light will enhance the contrast in the image by, in a fairly natural manner, making the bright areas brighter and the shadow areas a tad darker. One of my favorite tricks in PhotoKey 4 is to apply the soft focus effect to my final image using the Soft Light mode to give it a little extra pop. In this case, that's a bit extreme, so we could turn the strength down a little bit to get a more natural result. But if we just disable this filter real quick to compare that to the original, you can see how much impact even a subtle application of that soft light blend mode has on the final image. Overlay gives an even more dramatic increase in the contrast than the soft light does. And the last one, Multiply, will bring an overall darkening to the image. So, for basic soft focus effects, the default lighten mode will generally bring the best results. But, some terrific results can also be had by experimenting with the other blend modes available. That covers all of the effects found in both PhotoKey 4 and PhotoKey 4 Pro. Our next video will discuss creating more complex composites using overlays.